Hi, I'm Jules and welcome to Digital Rack Gear, where we bring you reviews and tips about digital rack gear for music production. Today we're reviewing the Yamaha D1500 from 1984. This is the era of tape machines, manual studio processes and limited studio resources. Every piece of gear had to earn its place in a studio. Talking of studios, this video is being produced at a transitional time while I reassemble my studio. I've demoed the D1500 in a novel way because of this, perhaps not how it was originally intended to be used. The t-shirt's a bit of a giveaway. However, this will give you a bit of a flavor of how it sounds and hopefully support why I've given it the scores shown at the end of this video. The D1500 is a mono delay line made in the era when they used to put the block diagram on the actual unit. Uh, obviously an analog to digital converter, uh, low pass filtering, it's also got an LFO for modulation uh, and has obviously a memory built in which is what it's using for the delay. So let's have a look at the D1500. Front panel has a multi-segment LED a level control and an output control, output level. Uh, it has a hard bypass, so you can actually hear the relay when it goes in and out. It has a hold function, which is also foot switchable at the back. And that allows uh, you to uh, effectively um, set up um, a loop of the sample that has just been recorded or the uh, what is in the memory. Uh, there are memories fantastic. Not a huge number of them, but um, enough to enable you to save some favorites. And that's the millisecond in time. Uh, then we've got data entry up and down controls, which allow you to set in one millisecond increments. And pretty handy it is, I must admit. Uh, there is then a store and copy buttons, and then uh, a button to select the actual time. Uh, this is the delay time, of course. There is uh, feedback controls for the delay, a uh, low pass filter, which you can uh, adjust in rudimentary units, uh, plus uh, a level control for the feedback and an inversion or not. It does have MIDI. And there is an LFO rate, uh, a choice of two uh, LFO waves and a LFO depth. Obviously with the depth at zero, you're not gonna be hearing any modulation. There is also a mix control, so you can dial in as much or as little of the delay as you would like. And then there's a MIDI program control as well. On the back, we have MIDI in and through, uh, CV uh, and on off for modulation. Uh, so CV control, that's pretty handy if we want to uh, real-time affect the modulation. The foot switch for hold, as I mentioned, and also uh, a, bypa a bypass. So these are the, uh, the two buttons that are on the front. Uh, a delay out and a mix out. So you've got a basically um, uh, a completely wet out and then a mix output. It's also minus 20 or plus four uh, on the output. You've got the same control plus four or minus 20 on the input. And it also has uh, unbalanced in and out as well. And over here, the very important 110 or 240 volt selector. I would say this is a fairly rudimentary single channel mono delay line. Uh, so it tops out at 1023 milliseconds, which is actually huge for the era. Uh, so really, really effective and really great. Liked it a lot.
I hope you've got an idea of what the D1500 offers in the way of functionality. So does it make sense to buy a vintage mono delay unit like the D1500 in 2022? This unit is almost 40 years old, which is remarkable. With all this front of mind, here is the digital rack gear score for the Yamaha D1500. First of all, usability. At the time of release, D1500 was a big leap forward in functionality by bringing MIDI control over delay. Today, we'd consider the deployment of that functionality pretty laughable as to simply step through the presets. Yamaha implemented real-time controls as we as we'd associate with MIDI today through foot switches and CV control. This is potentially easier to use than MIDI anyway. So I think even today it rates well. The one button per function front panel also holds up well. The up and down value buttons could perhaps have been replaced with a dial. However, that would have taken up valuable real estate space on the front panel. So works fairly well. Because it's a mono delay and has only two LFO wave short forms, I'm giving it three out of five for usability. For quality, with a wide bandwidth, I think the D1500 also holds up well today. Any piece of gear that's holding up over 35 years later has to have the stands the test of time quality stamp applied. So I think that's a good, uh, good indicator. Actually, any limitations on signal processing would today give this particular piece of gear a sound which some have said makes it sit better in the mix, and uh, especially compared to its contemporaries. I have to agree. I've used this on vocals and guitars in particular, and the delays sit really beautifully in a mix. They're not obtrusive and they give the required sense of space. The modulation can be wild or wound back to be subtle. Let's look at inspiration. Just because something's old doesn't make it great or even good. However, I think in the right hands, the D1500 performs well and its limitations such as the available LFO shapes could make it the source of inspiration. I actually particularly like the square wave. I'd say it has a sound that makes it more functional than inspirational. It sits really well in a mix. However, as a guitar pedal, getting the balance right may take some more work. It's a three out of five for inspiration. Let's talk value for money. I purchased this for around 125 Australian dollars and I think that's a great buy. However, the prices on the second hand market differ wildly in their asking prices. So consider your delay options and how this would work for your setup. For $125, I think this is a solid three and a half, maybe even a four out of five. For $300 asking price, it's more of a three in terms of value for money. And above that, I'd say the value for money rating would drop considerably. Hopefully this review has been of value to you. If you have an opportunity to try the D1500 or buy one, I hope it's uh, giving you some insight into whether it's going to work for you. Time. It's album time. And today we're going to feature the first album from a lady you may know as a movie star, but she was first and foremost a singer. Her name is Mila Jovovich, and she, you may know her from the great movie, one of my favorites, The Fifth Element. People I. The Resident Evil uh, series of movies she was in. This is her first album, The Divine Comedy from 1994. Fantastic album. It uh, may have included some synthetic elements, but it sounds really organic with traditional folk instruments, beautiful singing, fantastic arrangements. There are some jigs in here and really folk uh, inspired uh, rhythms, uh, but the instrumentation as well really makes this quite a diverse sounding album. Mila is an excellent singer, so I do encourage you to give this a listen. Fantastic and uh, well worth uh, well worth your time because this album has a long shelf life. We first bought it maybe 15 years ago and uh, I've enjoyed it pretty much ever since. So it occasionally comes back into my CD player and uh, I enjoy it a lot. It's a good well, contemplative album. These are all great songs. So well done Mila and um, I wish you'd continued on this vein actually. Really a lot of promise on this album. Give it a listen, you'll enjoy it. 
thank you for checking out this video. Thanks for staying until the end. Until next time, uh, please hit subscribe, hit like button if you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below and I'll be happy to come back to you. Until next time, keep on tracking.